Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Actual Dracula, and uh, welcome to another episode of Interview with the Dracula. And uh, tonight, my guest is uh, a little different than most of the creators I've interviewed, who've spent many a year toiling away in the slums of the comic book industry, uh, as his background is uh, in film as a screenwriter and uh, VFX and animation production manager. But now he can add that most coveted of titles of comic book writer uh, to his uh, resume. Um, and uh, as the campaign for his debut comic, Armored, is live now on Kickstarter. Uh, and uh, I had one. More. Oh, yeah. Also, you are my first fellow Canadian on Interview with yes. the Dracula. Yeah. So uh, which... Hopefully, this is kicking off what I hope will be my Canadian series. I got a bunch of Canadian creators I, I want to interview, so you'd be the first. Uh, anyhow, without further ado, uh, welcome Michael Schwartz. Uh, Mike, thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I, I was like really excited to be on like a Canadian show. This is my first yeah. like, live Canadian show, so I was like, okay, this is cool. I've done some American podcasts, and it's yeah. like, all right, time to do some Canadian content, you know, can come. Absolutely. Yeah, the, the, these are the ones, these are the kinds of shows everyone tries to get on, and the Canadian ones. The, <laughs> it's tough. The it's tough to get booked on them, you know? So, yeah. Especially with Dracula, actual Dracula, you know? Yep. The one and only. Um, but yeah, this is cool. I mean, so um, obviously, we're going to talk about uh, Armored, uh, your comic. Uh, but I did want to say first that it's nice to finally meet you face to face, uh, you know, sort of, even if it's just over camera. Yeah, we followed each other on Instagram for I don't know. I want to say like three years now. It, it's I think like it's that. been three years. It popped up like two days ago for me. It said like yeah. you were an actual Dracula. I've been you know following each other for I think it was three years. It said so. That that would make sense. Yeah, because I think I found out about you through Sandy the Comic Night. Oh, I don't I don't even know Sandy. This is crazy. no no. I yeah. think, well, I remember him telling me about you because um. He was like, "Oh yeah, you gotta check out this guy. He uh, he just posts all these books that he found for, found for fifty cents, and you had like some big books or something." And um, anyhow, so actually, before I go further, I should say that yeah, you you you're Michael Schwartz, but you're also on Instagram. You're fifty cent comic collector, yeah. and you do have one of the most memorable bios of anyone I follow. And that right there, you hit us with, "I had all of my comic books stolen." And that certainly uh, caught my attention. And so we, you'd been rebuilding your collection. I guess the idea was you were only posting comic books that you found for 50 cents. Is that correct? And is that like still the case? No, it's kind of deviated from that, I'd say. So yeah. like, it, what's funny is I, I started it. Do, do you know? I don't know if you know like Norin Rad 2 Turtles, yes. I think. Yeah, yeah. I know Norin. Yes, okay, so absolutely. I had another account that I used a lot and it was cartoon and horror where I just post stuff about cartoons and horror mm -hmm. movies a lot. And then he would be posting like comics he was buying yeah. and... It was a weird time where I, I was living in like a condo, so I couldn't have all my boxes. They're all at my mom's stored in my uh, mom's basement. So I was like, okay, I'll just leave it there. But I'd like watch what he'd post and stuff. And uh, and then I finally bought a house in Toronto. You know how hard that is. It's impossible, but I got a house in Toronto. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm going to move them all from my mom's. And... Um, I'm probably way off your question at this point, but I feel like there's a bit of info you need for <laughs> to answer that question. Uh, I brought I brought them all here and I was storing them in a, like a closet right next to me, right over here. And I had to like clean it out one day and I put it all in my garage. And literally that night, someone broke into my garage and just wiped us clean of everything. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, winter gear. That's yeah, I had movie posters. I had about 200 movie posters stolen because I'd been collecting movie posters for years. Um, 
I had, I had action figures stored in there that were stolen. It was just nuts. Like they took everything and, and we had just had a baby. So we were like sleep deprived. Like we, mm-hmm. my wife and I, we hadn't had sleep in days and he slept through the night that night. And <laughs> we both slept through someone breaking into the garage. So it wow. was, yeah. yeah, it was, uh, it was brutal. Um, yeah, was that's like a worst nightmare for, well, I mean, anyway, when having anything stolen sucks, but to have your entire collection, well, you know, movie was, posters too, that's brutal. Yeah. Yeah. It, and it wasn't just, like like it wasn't just the comics right it was like comics my dad gave me when i was like four like Mm -hmm. you know he would give me my dad's a huge comic collector so if he would like upgrade a comic he he would give that to me like the 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 low quality one you know like the yeah yeah and you know it was stuff like i had the first morbius but it was like it was in bad shape it wasn't in great shape but it meant a lot to me so all that Mm -hmm. stuff was gone had a bunch of fantastic fours gone you know like old golden age stuff he was upgrading he'd give to me so gone and then and then he would take me to conventions when i was younger and i had a lot of on 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 boards artists when i was like six would draw pictures for me like hulk and silver surfer or whatever that stuff was gone too because it was all in the boxes and so what i said to myself was i'm never collecting again i'm so upset my wife's like okay i'm gonna remember this and, yeah and then Noren Rad is famous. Posted. Famous last words. Exactly. We're collecting again. Yeah. So I see I see Noren Rad posting so much stuff that I was like, fuck, he's really making me want to buy some of my comics back. It's just too depressing. And I had a pull list, a very small one at Planet X, you know, in the beaches here right. in Toronto. Right. And so I was like, okay, maybe I'll just like get one or two. And then uh the first thing i did was i found someone that was selling like silver surfer issue like one to 134 and it basically worked out to like 25 cents a piece or 30 cents a piece so i was just like this is like you know this would have been 2019 beginning 2019 so there mm-hmm. wasn't was it 2019 yeah it would have been beginning 2019 so the boom hadn't hit yet so the people yeah. were still like getting rid of stuff so yeah I could get chunks. Like I was like, okay, I got to get all the Jeff John stuff. I like, I got to get silver surfer back. I got to get Hulk back. So I was just buying chunks. And then a friend said, Oh, your stolen comics could be at a pawn shop up the street. And that's where I discovered 50 cent comics. Okay. I was just going to the pawn shop. I I was on like parental leave. I was just hanging out with my son, going up to the pawn shop, going to the LCS, going to whatever comic shop I could go to and trying to be, you know, cheap about it. I had, I had no job. So I was like, okay, how can I collect this stuff back? But like, not spend a lot. And I was realizing you can get stuff. You just have to dig and be consistent. And, you know, I, did, I don't want anyone to overpay. I'm not really, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not good at selling comics. I hoard mm-hmm. comics. I'm really bad at it. So I was like, yeah. oh, I'm just going to share what I find. And Noren Rad, I, would, I, I was really doing it to share with him at first. And then other people started following me. And obviously we ended up following each other and tons of people I've made friends with on there now. Yeah. I hope I answered the question. That was, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, um, it's, I'm, I'm glad to find out that you, the reason you broke your promise to never collect again is all Noren Rad's fault. (laughs) Yeah. uh, I'm going to blame him a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I can also blame just, you know, the fact that the comic shop is down the street. So it it was hard to walk by and just be like, Oh my God. Yeah. Uh but yeah, okay, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um and yes, shout out to Norn, who's also an amazing artist. Uh I think everyone here watching already knows that. Yeah, yeah. Um so you uh yeah, because you were mentioning your your dad gave you, you know a bunch of his old comics and stuff. So um what you know, what were some of your favorite comics or or characters or end characters well like for my dad like before i like basically when i was starting to read he he would read to me all the spider man so we started with like amazing fantasy and worked our way up to i think about 100 and at that point he probably stopped but like that was really where i got into comics the most was because he'd read to me and it wasn't just spider-man it was other marvel titles mostly marvel um and I think that that's how I really, really, really got into it. And the fact that he would bring me to comic shops, I, I, I grew up in Cambridge. And so we'd go to a shop in Kitchener a lot. 
and he he would desert me i would just be like wandering the store you know looking at toys or looking at other comics and stuff and so he eventually made me my own pull list and so my first pull list was you know was spider-man i think it started with amazing spider-man but that went on to McFarlane spider-man um and silver surfer and hulk that's what i started with right and then and then uh you know uh as soon as McFarlane went over spawn i was like all about spawn and horror I'm, I'm like a big horror guy so i was like in the 90s starting to deviate from marvel and get more into uh <laughs> Vancouver comic junkie. He's got great. He's got such good VHS tapes. He's he posted. really I'm does. Yeah. I don't know where he finds that stuff. Yeah. Um, he just posted a sealed copy of a, a Warner VHS of uh, the I first smell. Saturday Night Live collection. That was just, pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyways, to answer your question, that's how I got into it. And those were, I would say, it was like Spawn, Silver Surfer, Hulk, and then uh, Hellboy. I got really into it as well. But it, when I went to university here in Toronto at York, um, I just before going, I discovered like Jeff Johns on the flash. I'm like a huge fan of the original flash TV show mm -hmm. from the nineties. And so I right. the first yeah. thing, you know, 1 million comic. I don't, I think they're gone. 1 million. They're, go they're gone. But I yeah, remember them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I used to, I, at one point, I, uh, I was living near them and I kind of discovered, uh, the you know jeff john's run on the flash and i just started collecting that and then i was like obsessed with dc for like years i'd say for like 10 years so i've i've been all over i, I think right now i'm a bit more marvel and indie than dc but uh you know mm -hmm. anyways okay yeah. cool um so um i i do want to talk about uh i was we could talk about armored now or sure. um you know what maybe maybe as i had a question to segue into that so maybe i'll start with you know kind of your background going into this because this armored is, is your first comic book you've written right because yeah. you are but you've been a screenwriter for for some time now how how long have you been um well i've been trying to break into screenwriting since i think oh my god 2009 was mm -hmm. when i like wrote my first pilot uh, my writing partner was my wife my, before we were married we were uh writing like tv show pilots and it was just weird because like canadian broadcasters were like interested in it but no no nothing ever got greenlit it's like really it's tough to break in and so I'd say from then I was writing, but I had my first kind of, I'd say break in, in, in getting something produced was No Malone, which is a Netflix movie mm -hmm. for kids. It's right. a kids movie. Yeah. Um, and anyone that has kids that are like between the ages of three and maybe eight now, I'm sure they've at least watched it once or had to suffer through it. Uh, a parent <laughs> has had to. So that was like kind of, I, 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 I worked in animation for a number of years as a production manager and I would always just be like showing the director things I had like shot. Like I did an ABC's of death short. I don't know if you're familiar with that um, horror anthology series. Uh, I shot one and it did really well. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, it, it was like about a manure monster and, and he was just like, <laughs> Oh, you just like shot this on a weekend. And so we, we started to develop a relationship. And so I started writing movies with him and, he after the movie I had PM'd um, uh, called The Nut Job. That was the movie he directed his first feature. Uh, he went on to Nome Alone, and they storyboarded their movie, and it ended up being a forty-minute movie. And so he called me up, and he's just like, "I need, I need a movie. I don't have a movie. I have a forty-minute movie." And so that was my basically my break in mm -hmm. uh, that opportunity. So yeah, that's that's where I started, and. I've written tons of movies that have not been made. And I think that's why a lot of writers are on strike right now in the U S is it's, it's tough. It's, it's not yeah. an yeah. industry to be in. Yeah. Yeah. And, and why, uh, why buy a new script when there's plenty of great ones out there, you can just remake. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They don't care about originals. <laughs> yeah. I've been attached uh, to some remakes too. That's what's funny. So, yeah. Yeah. Now, so did you originally go to school for animation then? No, I went to school for film production at York. Okay. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I had a weird career where I started at Disney for publicity. So I'd be oh. like, 
doing like media junkets, uh, you know, with Disney. And then uh, I ended up getting a job at Fox Searchlight. I'd worked for Fox Searchlight. So like over a few years, I was working in publicity and promotions. And then I ended up working for the Anna Green Gables company. Um, uh, after that, yeah, it's, it's a, been a weird trajectory. And somehow I, I, I think I made friends uh, with a guy that was at Toonbox, the animation studio. And he said, hey, come work over here. You know, come, come try out animation. And I started as a PA. And within a few months, I was a PM there. So uh, just the kind of luck. The whole industry, I feel like, is luck. I, I saw vancouver comic junkie he's mm -hmm. he's in the industry too i see it's right cool. yeah it's tough yeah yeah um uh yeah it's weird it's weird how things happen too it's it's i i think it is a lot of luck obviously you need a bit of talent but like yeah right time yeah. Right place. and you know i don't think the uh the comic book industry is all that different to be <laughs> honest and 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 that's the thing right so like for me anyhow to make the leap from say <clears throat> writing um writing scripts writing screenplays to writing a comic book or vice versa i don't think that's a huge leap right they're both visual mediums you're both writing for yeah something that whether it's an artist or a director is gonna you know visualize make visual right yeah so, absolutely yeah. um so so where did um actually before the history of armor how about for those hearing about Armored for the first time, what what is Armored? What's it about? Here, this here, I have a copy here. So this copy was uh, we had a bunch printed just for Arl Stein. That's what's so funny. That's the only reason I have this is because nice. Arl Stein, because yeah. uh, I worked with him on another movie. But I, you know, I didn't Zombie really. Zombie Town, right? Yeah, Zombie Town, which yeah. is in I think a few theaters still in Canada. I don't know about the U.S. But, uh, <clears throat> right. Uh, yeah so armored what was your question tell just you just want to know oh, about uh just yeah. yeah what's what's armored about just to i guess uh yeah. a synopsis uh, yeah sure yeah. it's uh it's about a young orphan boy uh mm -hmm. whose parents basically mysteriously disappear one day um who gets adopted by this couple and their son died in mysterious circumstances um we i basically opened the comic with you see his death so we as a reader know his death uh, like what happened but the boy the orphan andy he he's so obsessed with finding out what happened to his parents he becomes obsessed with finding out what happened to his new parents biological son so in his travels and trying to figure this out he happens upon an old castle where the boy died but he ends up falling into a tomb and discovering this mystical armor um that gives him powers basically but uh the 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 thing the the only catch is is that it's still being haunted by the original knight that wore it you know hundreds of years ago and so that knight has to train him to use the armor to fight against the thing that killed the boy and whatever else that conjured this creature so that's the, that's the basic that's the story in a nutshell it's uh you know it's kind of like aladdin with his genie or you know i kind of I was pitching it that way originally. Like, it's like, imagine like uh, the genie's a ghost, a goofy ghost from, you know, 13th century and a kid has magical armors instead of a flying carpet. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah I, yeah. I can see that. That That's a, that's a good way of selling it for sure. Yeah. Um, And so where, uh, I guess, where did this all begin in terms of, I guess, how long I've been working on armored and what inspired it, you know? Yeah, Maybe Aladdin was one of your. Yeah, no, no, yeah. I, the weirdest thing was, I think the idea came to me while uh, it was right after my son was born. So it would have been like 2018. Just the idea, oh and I, when he'd sleep, I'd just revisit old cartoons because I was always like thinking, like, oh, what's like the next? Because I'd done Gnome Alone, and I was writing a lot of scripts. I was like, oh, what's like another idea I have? And I, I do you remember Visionaries? I don't know how old you are, but. From the 80s visionaries or supernaturals they have those holograms in their chests yes. or their staffs i had some of those toys I yeah yeah the cartoon yeah uh, i ordered um a copy of the cartoon from the uk and so i was watching that and i was just like oh the visuals are so so cool i want i want to do something like with a knight and like i i used to go to europe a lot as a kid and i was like i just love castles so 
it kind of came to me, but I didn't know what to do with it. I was like, I don't, I don't know if it should be a movie. It doesn't feel right. And then as I like explored it more, it just got bigger and bigger. And the mythology is quite big. You can't tell from the first five issues or even the first comic, but it gets huge. Um, like the, the what I've mapped out is, is pretty big. But uh, at some point, I think it, it was like after my comics were stolen and I got back into it and to read like I was rereading everything like I you see like by stacks of comics and I'd read like you know like a quarter of the stack and I just started realizing I'm reading more comics than watching movies like I'm not gonna, <laughs> gonna I want to do something I love right now and in mm -hmm. armor because it had been in my head just felt right mm -hmm. um there was one point I think it was 2020 uh I had an opportunity to pitch um Jackie Chan's company a movie Okay. So I took, I took, there's one arc of armored that it, it may be the second arc. Now I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the plan is now. I, I don't know. I, it's constantly changing in my head, but might be the third. Um, there was one arc where I was like, Oh, this is a Jackie Chan movie. I'm going to write this as, as a treatment. And I, and, but they, they, the company I was working with, they didn't, they were like, no, Jackie Chan doesn't like ghosts. And so they turned it down immediately. And I was like, it is for sure a comic. I guess Jackie Chan hates ghosts. <laughs> He's just too scared of ghosts. He wants nothing to do with it. Where did it come yeah. from? It, you know, it was a really bizarre note. So I was like, whatever, it's mine. I guess it's mine still. So I can do whatever I want. Um, and so, yeah, it just kind of sat there. And then in 2021, I was just like, every movie i'd written it was just sitting on a shelf for a producer trying to get money and i was like i need something made i can't keep like i think at that point i was up to like seven scripts that were that i had been paid to write that were just languishing in development hell so right yeah i think that was the big push and my love <clears throat> of getting back into comics like so intensely like it was intense like comics mm -hmm. everywhere in my house like i've come stacked everywhere my wife can't stand it i'm sure so uh, that that was it and then i wrote what i did is i just wrote a screen i wrote a, um i wrote the first issue I, I spent a few months just analyzing my favorite comics like a lot of jeff john's comics i'd read i would even like read like the scripts like in the back of absolute edition mm -hmm. yeah like uh the vision you know uh Tom King's vision and stuff. I was just reading the scripts and I was like, I just got to figure this out, what the structure is. Cause it's different than movies. I, I definitely like if, if armored ever became a movie, like the first arc, it would not, it'd be so different, different scenes. I would do things differently. So I, I really yeah. wanted to make it like actually structured like a comic. And so I spent a few months doing that. Then I just dove in, wrote it. And I sent it to a buddy of mine, Ty Walker. He's done some work for Marvel, but he's primarily an animation art director and I was just thinking, if he hates it, then I'll just give up. Um, and he, he seemed to really like the script. And he wanted to do the art. I was like, this is amazing. But then I think he got hired onto, like, Thomas the Tank Engine as an art director. Yeah. <laughs> and he chose that. I don't know why he'd do that. Why would he choose Thomas over me? But uh, it's hard. You're an artist. It's hard being an artist in this industry. I, I it is. It, I don't know how my artist on Armour does it. Like, he, I, I have so much respect for you guys. Like yeah it, it it's a lot of work um and uh but that's the thing i'm I, you know i um i spent many years not really drawing or doing anything or at least not you know not comic book related mm -hmm. um but you know once i got back into it it's been it's all i really want to do yeah and uh but yeah the, things things have changed so much from when i was a kid whereas now the best way to break into comics is just to make your own comics yeah. it really is like and i i honestly didn't know that i think i was pretty naive like mm -hmm. I, after ty dropped out he said oh i can't do it i was like well where do i get an artist and he's like i don't know <laughs> he's like maybe i can reach out to some of my friends that you know that have worked on marvel books and so I, I think I just Googled, where do I find it? Where do I find an artist for a comic book? And there's like a Facebook group for that. They're literally yeah. just a Facebook group. And I didn't know that existed. And, and so instead of just hiring an artist, I hired um, an editor. Okay. That was my first thing. I just hired an editor. And the reason yeah. I got that editor is I've been following another account. And I don't know if you follow them on Instagram. Like Instagram means a lot to me. Like any, every single person 
that I have been following the past few years, like including yourself, like I, I'm so inspired by you guys. Like it just anything, just chatting. I think it's been a real community. It's I, I, I find like there's a real sense of community and like, um, I don't know. I just love talking to all of you. It, to me, that's like my favorite part about it, but about Instagram. But there's another guy on there uh, and he released a book called The Golem of Venice Beach. I don't know if you follow his his handle at all. Um, he start, It was really random. He he just started an account called Golem of Venice Beach. Mm-hmm. And he did a giveaway. And I was like, oh, I'll try out for this giveaway. And he started posting more and more about a comic he was working on. I was like, oh, this is interesting. On that Facebook group, I saw an editor saying, hey, I'm looking to edit comics now. If you need an editor, let me know. And I saw that what he was editing was The Golem of Venice Beach. So that's okay. why I was like, I asked, I asked, his name is Hanan, the, the writer. And I just said, Hey, I wonder, uh, what, like, what do you think of your editor? And he's like, Oh, he's fantastic. So I immediately hired him and, and he was super supportive of the comic. So he like totally got it. So I, I was like, I gotta, I gotta get this guy on board. Yeah. And, and so the, the editor, is this, uh, someone at, at the publisher at Clover press or no? No. So it's interesting because a lot of these indie publishers have their own editors, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah. Um, and a lot don't. And the, I think the idea was, you know, I'd get Chris on and then we'd get an in, independent publisher like Image or whatever, and they'd bring on their editor too. And I'd have two editors. I, I didn't really care. I just wanted anybody to publish it. Um, and so his name's Chris Stevens. He's actually a writer as well. He's like an Eisner award winning mm-hmm. uh, writer, um, but he's edited tons of stuff now. And but he does indies. It's all indies without publishers. Right. And I, I didn't know that either. You have to have like, a, like image will look at your stuff. But yeah. They like to look at complete books. And I was like, yes. what? I have to spend money and pay for like, I didn't get it. It's so different than film. Whereas film. It's like, here's a three page pitch. What do you think? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's true. But you know, this is, this is something for, I guess for other people, other writers out there who are wanting to, and this this is uh you know um i've seen so i've watched so many youtube videos about um uh i usually watch a lot of tutorials for comic art and stuff but there's so many comic writers out there who are wondering the same thing how do i find an artist and it's like yeah you, you know there's there's lots of ways you can find artists but another good route would be find an editor because they're getting submissions from all kinds of artists. Yeah, right? he's, so. he he was already kind of had his hands in a diff, bunch of different projects that had different artists. And mm-hmm. um, the other thing that, uh, you know, I've worked with tons of artists in animation, but I feel like sequential panel art is such a different beast than like storyboard art or like, you know, sure. just yeah. a, paint, a scene painting, you know, for a, an animated movie. And he can pick out, oh, this guy won't be able to keep up the quality or this mm-hmm. guy, like the things I just wouldn't know. And uh, that I found super beneficial. And in yeah. and he also, he'll, he, he talks to my artist a lot. And like, he, you know, if I can't necessarily describe what's wrong with it, he'll, he'll figure out a way that's, that's probably, you know, just not, not, I, I don't want to say I wouldn't give like a, a harsh criticism or anything, but he, he has probably a much better way of conveying my note than uh, I would to the artist since he's dealt with them for so long, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, so actually, and speaking of there, I, I'm just, I'll pull up the window right now. I may as well um, pull up the actual Kickstarter page here. Sure. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there we go. That way we can. Uh, cool. cool. Yeah, yeah. That is. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there it is, uh, guys. So, which I I did mention at the start of the show. Uh, the campaign for this is uh, now live until five days to go. Five days to go. Yeah. I, for yeah. us, it says September fifteenth, but Americans, it's September fourteenth. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's west coast time (laughs) and i gotta say congrats you have you are fully backed and well past your goal of uh 2300 there yeah which is it's a weird goal i i a lot of it is set by the publisher i don't you know Mm -hmm. they they have certain um 
you know, I think at the end of the day, they they want to make the book, but they wanted to see what kind of attention. Like they didn't know. They've never the, their right. Clover is a somewhat new company, um, mm-hmm. uh, and so they've been doing a lot of graphic novels and art books. Yeah, they've done one other comic series, and it was um, oh my goodness, I forget what it was now. But uh, it, it, it this is kind of their first ongoing series, so they weren't really sure. They were te- this is a testing the waters thing. They didn't know okay, what yeah. they had on their yeah. hand. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. Uh, speaking of the artwork, so the artist uh, uh, Ishmael Hernandez. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I think it's it's fantastic. So, um, I, I absolutely love it. I think it suits the story incredibly well. Um, yeah, for anyone watching, you've read it. You're one of the few people I have. I, read I've it, read yeah. it, and I yeah, I absolutely loved the first issue. I thought it was phenomenal. Thank you. Um, and uh, what I really love, I actually, I want to, I want to come back to that. I had some, okay. I had some things to say about it. Uh, only good things, I promise. But um, I did just want to look at this, uh, at the actual Kickstarter page here, um, a little bit. So, uh, oh, starting off with, actually, this so. Um, this has actually been getting, uh, quite a bit of press lately in, you know, uh, I think Bleeding Cool did a piece on it, uh, CBR, right? Did one yep. today? Yeah, they do. Yeah. They, they did an interview with me. Yeah, interview. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you've also got some, uh, glowing recommendations, uh, from some people here, including R.L. Stein course author of the very popular goosebump series um uh, a fun read and great new twist on old-fashioned horror i only have one question what happens next i i have that same question <laughs> uh and of course uh famous canadian a- comedian actor writer canadian legend dan Aykroyd. Oh, yeah. uh and and uh, he, of course, famously been uh, obsessed with supernatural and the occult for decades. So oh, yeah. he's a he's a good one to get uh, his opinion on. Absolutely. Um, uh, yeah, so yeah, the story uh, you went over that, but yeah, this the artwork. When I saw the artwork, um, at first it reminded me of a lot of uh, Andrea Muti. I don't know if you're familiar yep. with him. He did Bunny Mask. And, yeah. Uh, I, I, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. When I saw yeah. Bunny Mask, because I had, you know, I already had a lot of painted pages. And so when I saw Bunny mm-hmm. Mask, I was like, oh, this is similar. Yeah. So how did you, uh, how did you come to work uh, with him? Okay. So that's like a Chris thing as well, where, yeah. you know, we would just be getting like, I don't think we posted, but Chris has been posting for other books. And mm-hmm. I think Ishmael popped up. And people were like, oh, you should be working at Boom. And all these people started like sending him messages being like, here's contacts at this company, this company, this company. And Chris was like, and you could see it. It was like on the Facebook page, people like like shooting him DMs. And Chris was like, I think we should contact him if, if he interests you. And I showed it to my wife too, because I, I was like, this is kind of an all ages book to some degree right like i think young i don't know how young because like a kid dies right in the beginning spoilers you know it, yeah. it, it dies but i do think it is a youthful story um but it's also for adults like adults can read this i, I don't think it's like for kids uh by any means um and uh and to i, I wanted to know like what do people think of this art and my wife really liked it too and so i I just jumped. I was like, okay, I have to work with him. It, I, I love some of the stuff he had done on this other book. I was like, it's really, really cool. It's just different. It's not something you see every day. It's not, yeah. it's not the norm. Like I feel like I, I wanted it to stand out and he paints every page by hand. Mm-hmm. Like if there's a mistake. It's on that page. It's, yeah. you know, yeah. I, um, it's it's like it it is work of art like i i'm i'm kind of amazed by every panel because like if he fucks up like look at that one you have on the screen there like that's just yeah. a blank 
page, like that's blank white page yeah. painting over it. Like on, the, you know, the shirt's white. That's just the blank page. If he fucks up and spills paint there, it's done. He's got to redo it. So, yeah. Um, and especially, I mean, it looks like he's using watercolors, which is, is incredibly, yeah. in, uh, incredibly unforgiving medium. Yeah. Oh my God. It. I know. So yeah, he pencils it. So it's interesting. <laughs> he does a really rough, um, do like he'll rough out the whole issue and then we'll see it and he'll put like uh dialogue balloons in throughout and then um it, uh and then you know once i approve that or give notes he moves on to pencils and then he inks it and then he watercolors the whole thing and it's just unreal to see that process yeah 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 i think it's phenomenal artwork and as i said it's perfectly suited to this kind of story too i mean uh yeah, it just the whole thing just works. Um, so yeah, actually, I want to for I want to just go over some of these. Um, uh, let's see some of the reward reward packages, things you can get for backing this. Uh, as we said, it was five days left. You have to to back this issue. Two's just been unlocked. I guess is that as an add on. Yeah, it's an add-on now. I'm yeah. not sure if it really worked, to be honest with you, this whole add-on process. We probably won't do that for the next campaign, but um, right. it was an interesting uh, experiment, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, in some ways, it was kind of you know fun to see how quick we could unlock it, and it got unlocked. It, was, it may have been too fast in some ways, because right. we were ready for it uh, to be unlocked as quick as it was. Um, um, and here, now this, yeah, speaking of the artwork, okay, yeah, these pages... Are incredible and um yeah that's like and it's it's cool because it once he scans it in he puts he puts the white lines to separate the panels more defined right like yeah when you read the comic it's very defined white lines this is this is like a paint like it's a painting i i ended up buying some of the pages from ishmael like because I, yeah. I was like i don't <laughs> I, I i just had to own some of it myself of I bought course a yeah. yeah i mean you must have been tempting to buy them all right <laughs> yeah yeah i, I wish yeah. i could have um there yeah and there's a few there's a couple left i think actually all of issue two is left i'm not you know i'm sure we'll offer it again the next time it, it it's it's weird doing a kickstarter you know i've supported a bunch of kickstarter campaigns but i didn't realize how tough it is doing one it's like and i and i had clover doing the heavy lifting mm -hmm. i see people yeah. like like uh jay douglas writes i don't know if you follow him at all he, he's done a, jason douglas jason douglas he did yeah. a parallel mm -hmm. and like yeah I'm, i had him on this show actually oh no way i missed that episode yeah. okay i'm gonna go back it was one of my first uh, episodes yeah oh, was he talking about parallel yeah. then yeah we were talking about parallel yeah okay that yeah was like that was like two years ago and he uh, and yeah. i i was unfamiliar with his campaign i came into that late i bought a copy from him like you know i just said hey, you send me a copy um but then jane american he just did all himself and i'm just like mm -hmm. how do i do this I, i'm so stressed every day i can't even I, I haven't even been able to write i'm like this is just so <laughs> it's just stressful and you just feel like oh you're putting yourself your work out there and you just hope oh. but no one's able to read it yet right that's the hard thing yeah. is no one knows if it's good why are you gonna pay all this money um you know arnold stein says it's okay so <laughs> but i, I don't <laughs> yeah. know if i would be convinced yeah so i get it. it it's tough yeah yeah but you can you know that's something you can say that not many other kickstarter um campaigns that don't really have recommendations from dan Aykroyd or arnold stein so you do have that selling point but yeah. uh but also just <clears throat> again the artwork and, and these covers so i wanted to ask you about um You've got a bunch of variants. Yeah, I, I uh, went. I in, went, including went. this Jay Lee cover, and um, Jay Lee, of course, he's one of my favorite artists. Ever. Yeah, is there a way for you to pull up like the go down and see if there's like a package one that can show you like all the? Okay, there, that's a good one. Start yeah. with that one because that's the first issue. So, oh yeah, yeah. Um, so the first person to do a cover was Nick Patera. I don't know if you're familiar with this axe wielder John that he just did a campaign for. Uh, no. Yeah. So he did, uh, okay, he's really well known for the Manhattan Projects, which uh, he's Jonathan Hickman picked yeah, up. Yeah, I know that, Manhattan yeah. Projects, yeah. So he worked with Jonathan Hickman, and uh, Chris and Nick are partners. They have their own company. And 
he asked Nick to read it and Nick loved it and was like, I want to do covers on every issue. And he was like adamant. He, he, there's like a character that gets introduced at the end of issue five. Basically it's a cliffhanger for the next dark. And he's like, I have to be the person that draws that character. And yeah. so that's why he wanted to come on into, he did the first cover. Um, um, uh, Callie, the Jay Lee looking one. It looks like it's by Jay Lee because it is by Jay Lee. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is, yeah. it is, yeah. And and uh, so Nick came on board, and that helped us get Clover uh, interested. So Hank is the publisher at Clover. Hank is famous for being like I think a VP of something at uh, Vertigo. I forget these people's titles. I'm I'm really bad with names and titles and. Um, yes, especially right now I'm on, I'm on very little sleep because it is the Toronto film festival. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, then, uh, Chris had worked with Jay Lee in the past. He had done some stuff. And once again, it was like, Hey, would you be interested in this? You know, just hoping reading the first issue and he liked it too. So it was like, Oh my God, these people, um, and then Scott Collins did that other cover uh, with the this, light over top. Yeah, um, did there. Um, so I that was like just like I was just like I have to I have to get Scott because to me it was such an integral point in collecting for me was collecting the Flash when him mm -hmm. and Jeff Johns were together. I was like I just want to reach out to him and see if he'd do it. And thank God he responded. It's really hard to get people to respond. Like I've reached out to tons of artists and they don't even respond yeah or or artists that will that that chris knows that they just don't have time or whatever or i know their price and i can't afford them mm -hmm. yeah um but scott yeah he was so awesome to do it he's done two different color variations too and that's like nick we have two different color variations on his um and then that last one with the mask uh so he's he's a friend of mine he's from like the horror community he works on a he d he's done like some room morgue covers. He does Blu-ray covers. And I was like, I gotta ask Matt if he would do, he does these horror portraits for anyone watching. You should like go check out Matt Tarion's work. He does these horror portraits. It's like impressionist paintings of like okay. Freddy on one yeah. side and then his final girl on the other. Oh, nice. Yeah. Or he did like every Halloween movie that way, like the final yeah. girl and, and, and Michael Myers. So he did. He, so I've always wanted to work with him somehow. And so he agreed and yeah, I, I just love what he did, but he has, we've done, he's, he's the plan is, is he going to, he's going to do a portrait like of every character or every major character forever. That's my hope. So Definitely. So like one for one for each issue or something. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. got. I think we've. Re I think they revealed on Room Org uh, all five of his covers. So you can. Uh, it, there's like. Oh, it's wow. actually okay. a huge spoiler. The last two issues. Um, yeah. Visual spoilers, but. Uh, yeah. Well, so I guess he did this one here as well. Yeah, it was uh, of, of the night, the face of the ghostly yeah. night. There, yeah. Yeah, these are awesome. Um, and then. Uh, and then I see I was starting because it, all we had was I think it was like I don't even know if Nick was on board so I was starting to reach out to people my contacts who mm -hmm. aren't comic people yeah and uh the bottom one with the creature's mouth open in the night jumping towards mm -hmm. it for issue two that that's a Disney artist so okay. I were I got to work with like some incredible artists in animation and he had come from disney 90s disney animation it's like aladdin beauty and the beast and i just knew his work like i he, he used to bring in like all of his paintings and artwork from brother bear you remember that disney movie i don't think i ever saw that it's I, it's no. kind of one of those like directed video ones i think but anyway he, i would see stuff from lion king like he worked on lion king okay so yeah. I, was like, I really really want him to do uh, a digital painting cover for me and so he's done four actually but we didn't one cover of his would would have been for issue one, but it's so much better suited for issue five, and it's just an accident that it worked out that way. It's such an awesome cover. Um, so yeah, I convinced him, and then Chris reached out to Chrissy. I, we, you know, we had kind of a a short list of names of people we wanted to 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 work with, and uh, that was super exciting when she came on board because I remember when her spider. Do you remember her Spider Man cover, like the the Miles cover, and he's like this on a web. Um, oh yeah like, yeah when that yeah. came out it was like i was like i gotta get that cover and so it's really cool that 
that she agreed to do it. And I, I like how Disney-esque it is. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's cool. And that's another Nick cover. He's actually not even done that cover. It's, he takes like a week on a cover, the amount of detail he puts in. Mm-hmm. So he, I don't even think he's finished it yet. So Yeah, I mean, uh, the, all these uh, covers are incredible. And of course, you can get them all if you want. And it's yeah, very, yeah. it was very tempting. Yeah. <laughs> I know there's some wild ones too, like a chrome cover. We have a 3D lenticular cover. Yeah. yeah. We just went nuts. So yeah. Yeah. Well, they'll be pretty limited. Like they're obviously, I don't think there's a set number. You know, I'm not a guy that's really, a, a, you know, a limited variant guy. So I wasn't like, mm-hmm. Adamant. But yeah, you've got the the foil here as well. Yeah. Yeah, like there there's not going to be a ton. I'll tell you that much. But there there won't be. It, it's not like they'll probably be like I don't know, fifty to two hundred printed of of some of the foils. Um, okay, so here we go. That's how helpful. We should have been looking at these so we can yeah. match up the names with the covers here. Yeah. Guys, <laughs> if you're, yeah, if yeah. you weren't paying attention. But yeah, that's. Um, yeah, that Scott Collins cover is phenomenal. Uh, they all are. That's cool. And then, and then it, I, I'm, 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 I, I guess because Ishmael is an unknown, you know, no one's really mm-hmm. jumped on the commissioned art or or the original art yet. I, I, two pages have been sold, I think, or maybe mm-hmm. more. Um, but his stuff, like, I, 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 I'm just in love with, like, just yeah. the raw, the raw, like, actual page is unreal. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so guys, plenty, plenty of different options here for people who want to back this. Um, and any Torontonians, don't buy the Michael Schwartz signed one. I'll sign it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yeah. Right. Get, get Unless you want to, I'll, I'll sign it. I don't. I don't remember if I did or not. But if I did, you'll have to. You yeah, owe me another signature. Get- Exchange it yeah. for the Jay Lee. That's the one you really want. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I got the yeah, I got the Jay Lee one. Um, yeah. Yeah. His is limited. Yeah. He's doing, I think, fifty in total. We had some in a package, and then, uh, yeah, he's on, he's only doing fifty signs. So. Oh, they're signed. Oh, okay. No, I didn't. I don't know if I got this. Yeah, signed. he's signing the foil one, but only fifty. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. it's limited two hundred foil. I don't. I forget the exact numbers. Two hundred foil, but fifty are signed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, I gotta say, uh, you know, um, looked at a lot of been looking at a lot of Kickstarter campaigns lately. Uh, primarily thanks to my friend Katie, K-pop junkie, who, um, if you ever, if you ever plan on running a Kickstarter campaign again, talk to her because she looks at every single one of these, and she oh, is, yeah. um, she she interviews multiple creators a week who are who are doing their own campaigns so cool she yeah is, again, she I, is my kickstarter guru and uh so as i said i've looked at a lot lately through her and this yeah this is really um uh, for me one of the most impressive ones and one that even if i didn't know you i would say oh this looks like something i would genuinely want to back because it's you all this i mean first of all the story is kind of right up my alley it sounded really interesting and uh yeah just a very well put together uh campaign here i think so cool well thanks and that is all clover yeah. i do have to admit that, that they mm-hmm. they really um put this together and you know <clears throat> i gave my input here and there um yeah but yeah, yeah as as for the story itself uh mm-hmm. like i said i loved it i especially like that i mean the you you could have just gone with the okay the kid finds this armor that's haunted by a ghost but you know what really has me intrigued and makes me want to read the next issue is you you kind of set that up by first saying this kid's obsessed with finding his parents yeah and that you know that's adding another level to that story that um and especially with the way issue one ends it's just like that was a perfect a perfect uh way to get your hooks into readers if i i I think in that I have well, to re- I have to read the second issue. Wait, I don't have a choice. So that's the big thing that Clover liked about it is every yeah. issue. It it kind of has a mid point, uh, mm-hmm. like like turn page moment where they're like what, and then and then 
every an issue ends on this insane cliffhanger and they were always mm-hmm. like your <laughs> your cliffhangers are too much there people are, aren't going to be able to wait for the next one <laughs> That's like, yeah but yeah i i like that you know um, i think issue two I, yeah issue two has like a really good uh cliffhanger and three is by far my favorite cliffhanger of the the f- first arc so the first arc is five issues five issues and, and the, five is just being wrapped up now we will do another kickstarter um you know for anyone that misses one and two mm-hmm. those will be available again but it won't be all these covers we're not doing that again um but uh you'll be able to get one and two most likely the jay lee will always be available and mm-hmm. we'll do three yeah. and four and then we've talked about possibly unlocking five yeah. As as an option, um, or doing a five and six, so you get a, the start of the New York and New Arc and the end of the last arc. So we're kind of weighing things right now, seeing mm-hmm. how this ends. You know, we got a few days left. Um, yeah, we, we have there's you, a lot. Of would you plan on uh, collecting them in a, in a trade or? Oh yeah, we are. We I literally had a meeting on Friday about like the plan for collecting. Um, mm-hmm. Already, some I, I think they said like some libraries have reached out saying like they're they're really interested in seeing this once it's a trade. Um, just because it kind of is geared to all ages to a degree, it's got a Harry mm-hmm. Potterish vibe at points. You know, it's uh, right. Yeah, yeah, but it is horror. Like mm-hmm. there's some dead kids in this. You know. <laughs> yeah right <laughs> right off the bat yeah <laughs> uh, yeah yeah Which, yeah it's a, yeah um but yeah for our issue one uh i thought it was fantastic uh, thank you thank you I, yeah i can't i can't wait to uh i'm just wondering i'm like excited for people to read it that's the thing mm-hmm. like it's sitting on it for so many years it's so tough because i you know at, at points i just like clover can you please just release this i just really want i just want someone to read it it's like hard to like yeah. i felt like at a, a point where i was like oh great it's like all the films i've written for producers that are still sitting in their piles you know mm-hmm. so yeah but yeah it's finally getting out there and it, i think they say like the shipping date's like january it's not January. People will get it way sooner because it's done. They just need to print it. They're, that's just a just in case the printers explode and yeah, just just to cover cover their ass basically. Yeah, yeah. you'll yeah. get it way before because we were already planning the next campaign. I think January mm-hmm. February. So mm-hmm. um, we'll get it before then. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, awesome. Okay. Um. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I hope. Yeah, I can't wait for other people to read as well. And like, yeah, like you said, it must be, it must be uh, satisfying to know that that's going to be happening. Given, like you said, there's how many scripts you've written that you know. It's same with same with people who, how many comic books get optioned and nothing ever happens with them. That's, <laughs> that's pretty much par for the course. My favorite is when, uh, like. You know, what is it like key collector or one of those say, you know, this property has been optioned and, yeah. and, and all of a sudden it's like a hot book. Because yeah. it's like, do you know how many producers have already contacted me? And I'm just like, what a joke. Like, <laughs> yeah, it means yeah. nothing. It's it like, means nothing. Yeah. It basically means a producer's heard of your comic book. <laughs> I think oh, it's them. Yeah, it's great yeah. for indie indie books, though. Like I've read yeah. so many indie books just because it's I get FOMO, right? I'm just like, oh, yeah. I should read it. I should read it. It's going to be a movie or, you know, like I loved uh, Department of Truth. I wouldn't have read that if pe- people weren't like, hey, this is going to be a TV series. And right. Like, I'm glad I got a chance to read, you know, to, yeah. there's a lot like that. So yeah, Noctera as well. That was another one. Or it's oh, like Noctera. Noctera. You know, I, I, that was uh, Scott Snyder, who's had, I don't know how many projects optioned, but, you know, we'll probably never see the light of day, right? Yeah. Just... Did it, and that one got optioned, the Noctera? Like, Noctera I read that. did, yes. I read yeah, that for a while. That was great. Mm-hmm. great yeah. yeah. And that's one that would make a great, like, TV series or movie. Absolutely. That'd be, cool. That'd be really, really cool one. Yeah. That's still but going, right? They're like on issue twenty or it's something. It's still it's still going. I haven't read it in, in in a while, but yeah, it's still going. I believe. I think, I think that's the tough thing. Like the plan has always been this is an ongoing, but it mm-hmm. I, you know I think it, there will be a finite number 
uh, yeah. of issues, but it is hard. I don't know. I'm, I'm contemplating doing it the Hellboy way, you know, like here's like, you know, wake the devil and then um, like a bunch of mini series. Yeah. But it will yeah. be a, a whole story. Uh, right. Yeah. Like eventually yeah. you'll just get it like walking dead where it's like one, two, three, you know? Yeah. Um, um, um yeah but you know this is uh i'm i'm just happy to see that it's doing so well and that it's gonna get into a lot of people's hands like it's like yeah like when i when i make um say a video or something and nobody watches it it's like you know i'm not you know we don't do this stuff for other people you do it because you love it but it's like you also want other people to see it right because yeah, yeah. If it's if it's only for yourself, then it's just you know why are you really doing it? You know, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. oh, it's true. Yeah, yeah. So I think um, a part of you has to want to do it for yourself, and oh, then yeah, hope that it come because like it it is a labor of love doing like it is. Like yeah, you said this video like doing these interviews. It's like yeah, just how it, and comic books in general. Uh, yeah, because nobody makes comic books to become a millionaire, and yeah. if that's your goal, you're gonna be uh, thoroughly disappointed. Probably. Oh, yes, but, uh, yeah, you can see my yeah. bank account. I'll show you yeah. my bank account for that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we can't all be Rob Liefeld, you know. Oh my god, yeah, oh, the actual Dracula. What's this about? What's the what's oh, the... oh, actually, yes, I mean, well, tell me. tell maybe me. I'll plug my uh, so the CBC, uh. The Comic Book Community Awards, um, which is um, sort of a, just kind of a fun uh, like awards type thing uh, that uh, uh, another channel, Brian LCS, put together a few years ago where you can go nominate different uh, members of the comic book community, uh, you know, you, YouTube channels pretty much. And um, so, you know, there's categories like for different uh different kinds of videos you know best unboxing video best uh um review channel things like that and uh so this year i'm a finalist for most comedic content creator yeah and i don't know how that happened but uh well i love yeah. the intro their intro just had me i was like <laughs> i'm gonna just pop up with like a giant grin on my face from that. yeah i didn't know if i should feel awkward i was like he, you're like looking right at me as i'm about to start this interview <laughs> well i mean part of why i started this channel was to make people feel awkward so uh... <laughs> get them right off the bat um, yeah from thanks. that point i have been a drag lover yeah and that was shout out to jimmy the don there um but uh yeah so that's what the vote <laughs> vote okay I, I, I i'll get my ballot out yeah that, that's great yeah. cbcawards.org cool and uh, i'm actually putting a video out soon about uh why you should vote for me and uh why i'm funnier than the other channels <laughs> they're actually all all great channels as well that's awesome. um but yeah, you got anything else to say? Uh, yeah, enough about me. <laughs> I can do this all day long. What you got anything else to say about uh, about armored or? Uh... Yeah, what I don't know. What 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 do people? What's the, are there people watching like right now live? As there's well? still like, what, five. Pe there's five people. People have been filtering in and out right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Five people. It is. Yeah. It is a Saturday. And pe people do watch the these uh after on the rewind. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I can. I can. I, I don't want to bore people but i yeah i have a movie out right now zombie town mm -hmm. uh which is in theaters it's coming so yeah every day i find something new out about it uh yeah <laughs> uh so it's in theaters in canada i think this will be its last week okay um yeah i i was a co-writer on that and uh it's coming to hulu in the u.s it was supposed to come october 1st but it'll be uh on hulu october 26th for like a big halloween weekend uh, and it is a halloween movie it's set at halloween right Dan Aykroyd's in it. it's based on our all-stein book um but it was supposed to do paramount plus but i'm hearing it may go to crave here in canada instead okay i think better for canadians i don't know many canadians I... 
who have Paramount Plus, but mm, uh, probably not a, nowhere near as many as Crave, I would I mean, think. Yeah. So yeah. I think it'd be much better. So yeah. yeah, it's a fun movie. It is for kids. Like, don't if you're an adult looking for an adult like Dan Aykroyd Chevy Chase movie, s- stay far away. That is not it. Do not get fooled. <laughs> it is a kids movie. Um, right. and, and adults can watch it with their kids. Like I brought, I brought my kids to it. Um, I'm on Twitter if and uh, or X, I guess. If you go, mm-hmm. I posted a picture. I took all the neighborhood kids to go see it, and I took the took a picture and I tagged Arl Stein on, on it, and he reposted it. And like, it's just getting so much love. It, it like it's cool being able to bring a kid to like a horror movie. Yeah, it's like horror. It's just they get scared, and so this has yeah. just enough scares. It's yeah. so over the top. It's so cheesy. It's a cheesy yeah. movie, but that's what it, it was intended for. Probably too scary for Jackie Chan, though, right? Oh my God! Yeah. It, well, there's no ghosts. There's no. Ghosts. I can't, as long as there's no ghosts, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's sensitive. That Jackie. Yeah. Chan. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh, actually, so I did want. I did want. I had to ask you about this only because, um, you did some work on one of my favorite shows, ever. What we do in the shadows. Yeah. Yeah. Uh which is easily one of the best vampire projects to merge in many years. Um, so what, what did you do on that show? Is that um... okay? So I, uh, I, I work in visual effects uh, mm-hmm. or I did, I used to before the industry ex- imploded. Um, so for the past two years, I've been a VFX production manager and, and VFX is interesting because you work at like, you know, the studio and, they just assign you different shows. So it's like really quick turnover. Like sometimes mm-hmm. you spend months, sometimes you spend a month on it or six months. Um, uh, and, and every once in a while you get like a really cool show. So I started, my first show was Moon Knight. And oh, I just wow. remember being yeah. like, I'm on Moon Knight. Oh my God, this is yeah. insane. But within a day I was like, I had worked in animation for so long that I knew animation production management. I didn't know VFX. And there was another guy who was on a SpongeBob movie and he hated it. He's like, I don't understand animation. And so we swapped. So I was no longer on Moon Knight. I was on um, on SpongeBob where I was in meetings where uh, like one of the producers who I think got fired uh, was like, is Sandy Cheek's breasts too big or should they be bigger? (laughs) Those are the kind of uh, meetings I was in. It was hilarious. Well, those are the important questions. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but anyways, I worked on that for a while, and then I segued into like regular effect shows, and one of them was what we do in the shadows. I think I was working on three shows at once at that point, mm-hmm. and I loved it. I'm like you; it's like one of the best. I watch it's so it. good. Yeah, it's, it's so good. And so every <clears throat> everything we did on that show, it, it was primarily um, Colin. Uh, Oh my God, what's his last name? You know, Colin the Energy Suck Vampire? Mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, you, do you remember? I, I'm sure this isn't a spoiler now because it's happened a season ago. Uh, uh, when he comes back as a child, he comes back as a baby, but mm-hmm. it's his head. So we did head replacement. So like all, not all of them, but a lot of the head replacement work is is the studio I was working for. So okay, that's all we did on that shot was... And in, in VFX, you don't get the sound in the, so you're just like seeing the shot. So I would, we'd be in hysterics in meeting being like, is his neck attached right? Is his head too big? It was like shrink his head by 30%, shrink his head by 10%. So that was every day just laughing at these shots coming in. It just looked so ridiculous. Oh, that's amazing. That's what I did on that. Yeah. yeah. I got to work on like Walking Dead, worked on so many random shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah. Toronto studio too. But um, yeah. because of the strikes, it's, it's dead. I got, you know, got yeah. laid off recently and uh, right. yeah, but I'm back into writing now. So it's, it's kind of an interesting segue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Um, yeah. I mean, I think that I've gone through all my questions. I don't know all if right. there's uh, anything else. Oh, well, I, except one because this is interview with the dracula my last question is always um what is your favorite dracula movie okay that's a that's a good one i'm gonna say monster squad okay yeah 
because it is you know he is dracula dracula is in it and i know it's not a dracula movie but that is my Mm go-to movie but yeah he he's technically he's dracula right as long as dracula Dracula is in in the movie yeah yeah i you know i grew that's that's one i watched like really young and then rewatched a lot my kids watch it now Mm-hmm. I would say that, yeah. but you know, I like I like a lot. Like I, I even put, I was like, I got to swap out some VHS. I put Fright Night here for you, so we can get some. Right. Yeah, action. another another good one. Yeah, I like a lot. You know, I spent a lot of time watching Nosferatu when I was in university. Yeah. Uh, uh, and what's yours? I'm curious. Oh, my favorite my favorite Dracula movie uh, is uh, Coppola's Dracula. Oh, uh, Bram Stoker's Bram Dracula. Gary Oldman. That's my it's, favorite. That's the one that really uh, got me interested in Dracula, and uh, still my favorite. Yeah, that's cool. Bella yeah. Lugosi's up there, but uh, I, I got to go with Francis Ford Coppola. That's yeah. every shot is like a work of art. It, and, yeah, uh, it's, yeah. I remember when it came out? My parents wouldn't let me watch it, and so uh, I had I was having a sleepover, <laughs> and uh, yeah. we ended up finding like Creep Show on TV and watched that, mm-hmm. and I'm like. I could have been watching this with you, but now I'm watching, you know, another horror movie that I probably shouldn't be watching. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, yeah I, no, I, I love everything about that movie. The costume design is, you can't beat that. It's, yeah. it's the best. And actually I, a couple of years ago, I watched this great, I forget who did it. Someone did a really great breakdown of like all the top Dracula movies, like the top 15, 20 Dracula movies. And they went through each one bit by bit to see which one was most, I guess, faithful to the novel. And Coppola's one is like, it's like right there as being the most similar to the actual book. Yeah, then, yeah. I, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's great. Um, it's one of my Yeah, favorites. so that's that's my favorite. Um but yeah, oh Joe says interview with the vampire. That's that's great too. Technically not Dracula, but as far as vampire yeah. stuff goes, yeah. <laughs> I I I don't know that interview with the inter, interview with the vampire. I don't know that I would say it's good, but I have a soft spot for it definitely. I do too. Yeah. 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 I'm trying to think uh, of other Dracula ones. Did you see that new one, The Last Voyage of Demeter? Is that what it's called? I still need to watch that. I heard it was really good. Uh, I think there's a new Nosferatu coming out soon too. Uh, I yeah, I think I heard something about that as well. A, a pretty well-known director doing it. I forget who's doing it. Yeah. I don't know. It pops up in my feed every once in a while, like news about it or something. Yeah. Well, you know, you'll see it. Yeah. I'm sure, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I think that that'll do it for me, unless you get. Anything else you wanted to add? Uh, no, all good, man. I really appreciate you having me on. Like, honestly, I, I'm like so excited we got to meet. I know just on camera, but like I, I've missed the past two years at Fan Expo and I've hoped to be able to go because I wanted to meet you in person. Um, yeah, well, definitely. You got to go next year or, you know, well, I or, used to you know what? I'm I'm sure we can figure some way. I mean, yeah. even just to meet up at a shop or something, you know, we should we yeah. should get some of the other Toronto Instagram guys to come too like uh yeah absolutely specialists, specialists, I yes know. i have yeah, i have not met him either and i still don't know how to pronounce his name yeah. so yeah. bryden yeah bryden lives in my neighborhood so I, i've seen him a few times oh we he know, does great yeah comic okay. and stuff. uh yeah there's a few there's a few people in toronto i think yeah and i know you guys you have like a crew as well too right in toronto yeah, I mean, uh, so there's uh, Comic Ozzy, who I used to do a show with. He's in. Toronto. I follow him. I'm I'm yeah. in awe of what he posts. I'm always like, oh, this He's, guy. Yeah. And his, like. It, yeah, his collection up. is just uh, insane. Yeah. Like, did he buy a collection? Like, I saw him buy a collection. He bought a massive like, collection. And oh uh, I think he's probably God. bought a few more since because he just keeps getting more and more stuff. But like, how does he have this yeah. stuff? It's so good. I don't, I don't even know. Yeah. But a lot of people online have amazing collections. I'm just too cheap. I just, I, I just, I, well, I'm jobless. That's the other problem. You know, mm-hmm. you know struggling artist. <laughs> so I got to do the cheap bins. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Cool. Yeah, but. 
yeah no this was great thank you thank you for for coming on and uh no problem yeah like and, i said i loved our uh, first issue of armored and uh guys highly recommend it back in it now if you haven't even if you just even if it's just to get the 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 pdf yeah. anything just read the book because it's it's awesome um, yeah i i know it's i i really appreciate any canadian buying it honestly because like yeah. the price to ship here is painful and oh yeah and i know like right now there's a bit of an issue with adding on issue two that the publisher's trying to work out like a rebate so that you're not paying double right now it shows up as double when you add on issue two so they're trying to work that out and hopefully they'll have an answer by monday or tuesday right uh, I've heard about issues with these add-ons before. I yeah. know I know other Kickstarter campaigns have had issues with that. It, it's it's yeah. a it's a weird site and I think it there's mm -hmm. a few kinks to it. So they're trying to work it out. If they don't, we'll make sure it's fixed for uh the next campaign and just, mm -hmm. you know, maybe give issue one uh one a shot. And if you're in Toronto, you can ship it to my aunt's house or my 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 wife's aunt in New York and I'll go pick it up for everyone. I've already been doing that for people. I said, if oh, you yeah? Want, yeah. Yeah. So if you really want a, a cheap way to get it, that's an option. So yeah. Adrian, if you need if you need that hooked up, let me know. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. But so I really do appreciate everyone, uh, like anyone, because it is expensive. Like, look at me. I'm a cheap 50 cent comic collector, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I'd go to dollar bins, although like your first question my count has i have grown i do buy five dollar comics one you know yeah ten dollar comics do you know that shop in uh, kitchener the comic warehouse uh no i've never been there okay i'm gonna i'll drive you there one day we gotta go okay. i gotta bring bryden too it um it's it's just like two floors of comics it's like a warehouse of comics and they just have five dollar bins and ten dollar bins and then they yeah. have like expensive stuff but the, the the stuff they put in those five and ten dollar bins is amazing like it's unbelievable hmm. so yeah we'll, we'll do a road trip maybe we'll do a video yeah, it'd be great yeah uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah thank you to everyone i i honestly it is so expensive to buy on these you know to support and to pay for the shipping so i i appreciate it and yeah like if you just want to like give it a shot like pdf pdf that that baby <laughs> yeah i mean uh, no i i think uh um uh, i know for me i i can't wait to to read the to see where this goes um i'll definitely be grabbing issue two and cool, i'm sure cool. three and four and five because yeah first one was fantastic so thanks man thank you yeah um, we don't have a reader copy of two yet on pdf mm -hmm. but once we do I'll, I'll i'll send that your way so awesome yeah cool all right michael well thank you and thank uh you. thank you to everyone in the chats yeah. and everyone watching this on the rewind and um yeah i guess uh i guess that's it i don't know who when i'll be back with another episode of interview with the dracula i got a few creators i'm hitting up um i got one i got one i i, I haven't got a response from but Still crossing my fingers for Jay Baruchel, who whose comic just came out this week, and uh, I've been wanting to talk to him for a while because uh, I know he's really into comics, and uh, I think he lives down the street from me. So oh, does he? I, I've seen him walk by a bunch of times. I've I don't right. know. Well, tell him to hit me up then. Yeah, I'll like, say tell hey, him to respond to my message. Okay, that I'll do. I'm literally gonna do that now. I'll see him yeah. on the and say, "Look up actual Dragula. You gotta get on his show." Yeah uh but yeah i have uh so i think probably within the next few weeks hopefully have another episode lined up cool um yeah if not i have some other videos coming out this week too i just put up my fan expo hall yesterday and uh i have another video dropping tomorrow so guys check that out and yeah thank you uh thank you again michael and uh okay. thank you everyone for uh watching and uh see you next time Thanks, everyone.